Let's continue our conversation with Middle East expert Dr. Walid Ferris as these stories continue to develop in France. Not one, but two hostage situations, one involving the brothers, the Kawachi brothers, believed to have attacked that French satirical publication earlier this week, leaving a dozen dead, and the other situation unfolding yet today in eastern Paris at a, uh, at a kosher uh, market there. Walid, we were talking earlier, and uh, as we were heading into the break, sounded to me as if you were, you were accurately describing what I would call the paralysis of being politically correct. The notion that elites and so-called sophisticates uh, easily are entrapped by the notion of Islamophobia when instead what we are seeing in Western democracies and certainly in Western Europe is the growth of jihadism. How serious is the paralysis of the politically correct? It's very serious. I have published several books on this congressman since 2005. One was Future Jihad, the other was The War of Ideas. And all of these books have shown the readers and the public and many members in Congress and the European Parliament that it is a systematic elimination of our knowledge of the foe. So it all begins with petrodollars decades ago being invested on campuses so that there will be a study of the region from the prism that is very sympathetic to the Islamists and to the jihadists. So now you have hundreds and hundreds of advisors of academic intellectuals who are framing the debate with the executive branches mostly, more so than with Congress, with media. So now this elite is blocking the government, various governments, from understanding what the threat is, diverting them into other issues such as, oh, they don't have jobs. What do you mean that they don't have jobs? In England, there were 45 medical doctors who make a lot of money who were involved in these kinds of jihadi activities. The donors are very rich. So it's not about economics, it's about an ideology. So yes, our governments have been submitted to an influence by an organized lobby to take away, to derail our national security analysis. And I hope that the next Congress here, the next European Parliament in Europe, will, will address this issue very seriously. And you mentioned the Congress and the European Parliament, but in the executive branch here in the United States, President Obama, suffice it to say, has a, has a very different posture, it would seem, from his predecessors. What should President Obama be doing now, and do you think he will take some action to prevent these kinds of attacks here? Well, his position is different, not just from the Republican predecessor, but also from the Democrat and Republican predecessors, all of them combined. The problem is that this, this administration, the president, are receiving a perspective, an analysis, an advice from a, a whole pyramid of advisors who are advising that we should not engage in a confrontation with the jihadists. We should make concessions. We should strike a deal with Iran. We should withdraw from the region. We should not strike at Assad. We should be part of the partners of the Muslim Brotherhood. So, Congressman, it's not just about few incidents, about policy. What to do? The president needs to start changing his policy, and Congress needs to convince him. Now there's a right equation between a new majority in Congress and the administration. They need each other if they want to fight the threat. So they need to find a new policy. While lead 45 seconds remain, is it fair, is it accurate to describe the Obama policy as one of appeasement? It is one of appeasement, but one that thinks that it is right. It's not just let's do appeasement because we don't want to go into a complicated world. They actually think that they are solving the issue. They're reading of the results on the ground in the region and now across the Atlantic is wrong. And it needs to be corrected and to be corrected on a strategic level. Middle Eastern expert Walid Ferris, we thank you for your time and your insights. We would point out that the video we were showing there just a second ago was of President Obama signing a book of condolence at the French embassy in Washington, D.C. Uh, this story continues to develop, or these stories, and we'll continue to follow them as America's Forum continues here on Newsmax TV.